the end call ourselves the hacking hackers. <laughs> there were there were two more H's in the name. I'm francophone. We don't like H's at all. So I thought two was enough. As as you can see, it's um, we had a, a good uh, diverse group of people in our team, and that I think that helped a lot. We work on very different aspects, and I think we work very well. Got a lot of information at the end. Not all the result we wanted, but we got some, and we're very very pleased with what we got. So the original uh, proposal was uh, suggest new recreational trails in the Casino Park using social and geospatial data. It's not exactly what we end up with, and uh, Dave sent me this morning perfectly what we actually did. We, we did identify key areas of interest. I use areas, some people use point. I work more with areas, my preference. Uh, so those areas that might influence the development and location of where those unofficial trails are in the Casino Park. So if you understand why they're going somewhere, you know why those trails are there. So just to give you an idea of what we've done compared to what we, uh, we set up we were going to do. Uh, we wanted to find non-official non trails and areas of interest that might have been missed by the NCC. We're not too sure if we found the one that we missed because we don't have the layer, the GIS layers of what they found. We have some printout, but we don't have, so we cannot say. But we did find a lot of areas of interest from different sources, and uh, we we found <coughs> a lot of trails too. So um, we. I didn't have really have time to do a real good trend analysis of the vegetation. <coughs> I've shown example static, but there's more massaging of the data to make sure you're not finding stuff that makes no sense. So I'll just show one example of vegetation in the park, but not the real the change over time, because I didn't want to show uh, to people uh, an area that might have decreased and that might just have been the sun angle that reflects differently on the slope. So that's better to just show one example. and. Um, the NCC, the in charge of the park, they wanted to know some information about promenade versus trails, daytime versus nighttime, summer versus in, in, in winter. We found some interesting. We, we, we found good ways of finding that information. We don't have all of that, but we have some few examples to show you. So, finding the trails. So, this is the park, as you know. And this is my uh, vegetation map of it. So, it's quite nice. But you know, where you have uh, big slopes, there's some areas that look there's a lot. What you get very easily with that is water. You get the lakes and the and all the rivers very well. So that's for sure that can be found very easily. Okay, this is the uh, trails found on OpenStreetMap. So it's completely free. You can go. We we imported those in our JS, and those are those. And the next one, well, I'm gonna add an overlay over some of those. The official trails. So you see there's still a lot of trails, especially here, that are in OpenStreetMap that are not official. So that was one way to find some of those trails. We knew that the website Strava had a lot of information about those trails, but we didn't get the data from them. So what we've done as a test, uh, we uh, did a screen grab of one uh, on their heat map, which that shows a lot of places where people have walked, so you get the GPS track. And we georeferenced it to our system. So although we get a lot of trail outside, we got a few extra trails from that. So we were quite happy, a little bit more trails. But they're not in the real JS, they're on an image side, so we could not do analysis as well with those. And as another way to find trails that we looked at, but uh, computer did not have enough power to really do the image analysis on the uh, half a meter resolution image. So this is the image that we had. We had only part of it. And if you zoom in in some area, so that's one area. So visually, well, you know, I would say there's a trail here. In fact, by putting the uh, GIS layers off some of the trails, official and not over it, you can see there's a trail there. And if you look, there is, might be another one here also. So there's a, we didn't do the uh, real analysis, but you see there's a potential with images taken uh, when there's no leaves. As a, you can probably find a lot of those trails. And I have another example. Obviously, the larger trails are very easy to see. And there's some, a few things going on around. So that trail is there. And you get some of them. See, I would have guessed there was one here. The elevation model might help to find if that's a trail or just a change in topography. We have not done that analysis. But that's a potential that that, that data set could be used for. So. 
once we had those, uh, those, all those trails, we tried to get as much areas of interest as possible. Here what you have are the geotag uh, tweets, probably from images that we got. So we, uh, we use the hashtag get to know, so that's why you get a lot of images that are outside the park that were, but you know, you get a lot of points that are in the, in the park. And those are the uh, place where people do rock climbing. So we got those also. There's others that are not shown. We uh, found a website that had uh, where beaver dams, some of beaver dams are, and uh, some also where the mines are. And we'll see example with the mines uh, also, this one here. So you have in, in red here, unofficial trails. And it just happened, if you look at this line, it goes directly to the Foresight Mine. So obviously that trail was created to go to that abandoned mine. There's another example here, another abandoned mine. Although it doesn't lead directly, it goes pretty close. So there's a good chance that people might have been going to that one too. Uh, and we found some of the, the uh, geotag of the, the tweets that actually seems to go also towards where some of the trails. So obviously they went there and they took a photo at that point. So just some example in the last one uh, for rock climbing. So those are areas where there's rock climbing and there's a lot of trails going through. So there might be people climbing or just to go to that point and do that. So we were able to find good example of why those trails were, were, uh, were developed in the, uh, in the park. So it's kind of a uh, review of uh, some of the geo findings we found, so things that were in a geographical uh, way. Basically, we found several ways to get the unofficial trails. Uh, you can get the trails by using uh, very high resolution imagery off season, not in the summer, because the closed canopy, you won't see anything underneath the, the canopy. Uh, you can use Strava. If you pay for it, you can get the data, and that's very useful. It, uh, from what I heard, the, uh, the NCC has done that for, for their way of finding some of those trails. And OpenStreetMap has some of them too. They don't have all of them, but they have some of them. Uh, to get the area of interest, we, uh, you can use the geotags and some of the, 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 the photos on Twitter. And some different activity websites. They're not all free, but you can get some. Some we have not done. We have not done the geocache, and, but we've done mining and uh, some specific activities. Uh, one thing, OpenStreetMap has a mix of official and unofficial trails, but neither of those are complete. So you get a mix, so that's not, you have to be careful what you get there. And uh, we can say, of course, that many of the unofficial trails actually lead to those areas. Some other interesting things we found more by doing analysis over like document. The first two are from, uh, we got the raw data from a survey that the NCC has done for their trails. And this is only resolved for the English version of, of the text. They had, they had basically done how many people have mentioned some different words. But in their analysis that they show, at least they show a mountain bike as a word, but not just bike. And in fact, bike is used more than the, any of the other words. But we have not done the analysis to see if they're uh, positive about bikes or they're complaining about bikes on the trails. So that's something that could be done later. Uh, we tried to see if the people who were sending uh, answers to, to those uh, surveys, if they, if they were doing just winter or summer by doing some keywords, snowshoeing uh, with uh, biking in the summer or something. And there were very little people. It seemed most people were answering one activity that they do one season or the other. I'm sure there are a lot to do both, but we didn't find any uh, that were obvious. And uh, some of you might not know, Google has a lot of neat things that you can use to do some analysis. Uh, Google Correlate and Google Trend. So we, uh, we use, in fact, uh, Grenda especially did all of those mainly. And she, um, I trying to, you can find correlation. It's not always a causation. It's a correlation between different search words. And it seems, of course, that's obvious during the season, people, people will uh, type Gatineau Park and Parc de la Gatineau about the same time during the years. Very, very high correlation between the two. Uh, but what was interesting on the uh, French word, if you look at just Parc de la Gatineau, one of the very strong results you get is CEPAC. For those who don't know, that's the organization that's in charge of all, of many of the parks in Quebec. And they, most people go to that site, it's for camping. 
which is not something that Gatineau Park is really known for. So it seems that there's a diff might be a different view from francophone what a park is compared to what an, uh, an anglophone person. We cannot claim that, but it might be that. And by looking at the trend, we found the first two peaks of the dates where Gatineau Park is searched the most. One is in early July, and the other one is in mid-October. And the obvious reason for mid-October is when the leaves are changing. So when for the fall foliage, there seems to be a peak. And I did, a, I don't have it here, but I did, I did a search for fall foliage itself. And it's the week after over Canada that fall foliage is uh, searched the most. But of course, different areas will have different time of year when the leaves change, so that's possible there's a shift between the two, but that's the most probable cause of, of that surge. And not related directly to the, to the park, but did a search on the fat tire bike, and it's one of those that were that's more and more uh, searched on, on the internet. And I'm sure the park knows, but I think it's something they need to consider because there's a high demand for trails for those in the winter. So if we had more time, because we touched barely a few things and we want to say exactly what we've done. So, you know, we didn't look at the, uh, at if some of those uh, <clears throat> unofficial trades were leading to a geocache, because a geocache, we, we'd have to probably extract those manually. They, it's not easy to get all the uh, coordinates for the geocache. Um, suggestions that were done, uh, looking at land survey markers, so the, the geological survey, <laughs> Canada, they have markers everywhere around Canada. I once stumbled upon one in the middle of the tundra, for example. You know, you're in the middle of nowhere, there's nothing, and then you see something with a name on it, and a tag saying natural resources. So there are some, some people go and find those, for example. And supposedly some people also look at lat long or UTM coordinates, and they like to go to areas where they cross at, at the integer numbers. That's another way to maybe find some different kind of uh, area of interest. Um, for the users of the of the trail, well, we didn't really do a lot of search on uh, on uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram. Uh, I did one test with Instagram uh, photos, tried to see if I could get the number of photos that were in a different season, doing a very simple image analysis. I got 11% for winter, but I got so many errors that I would not use that number in any, uh, any official presentation. I can say it, but I wouldn't put it on the paper. Um, to, to get more of that, we Having Strava data would be very useful to, uh, to get all the unofficial trails. And we didn't study, didn't have time to really study the degradation of vegetation that might be due to uh, the trails. Um, one thing we, we talked about is when are those trails actually created? Are they created in the winter, the summer? And so that could lead to the purpose why those trails were created. And uh, to assess if a trail is easy to use or not, uh, we wanted to use the elevation models, but we uh, didn't have time to, uh, to do that work. So, uh, some suggestion that might come later, but we wanted our team to have some specific one. Um, if you work with very large uh, imagery, uh, you need a better computer than, than the laptops we had. So that was very limited. Um, I tried a few things with the, the high resolution imagery and it crashed almost every time. I'm not sure if it was for memory, but it didn't work. Uh, and maybe we, if we're going to work with those data, uh, we maybe need to cut the, uh, the areas of interest first to have smaller images. And uh, we had the Twitter that, was, that had the geo information but was not saving a geo JSON, so we could not import it directly in our GIS software. That's something that if we were to redo that, we would do that, that in advance. And for Landsat, some of the problem of using many dates is to, it's better to normalize the imagery to make sure you're not introducing anything that, that would be artificially uh, found to the, the trend. And of course, one day, we, we, we're very happy with what we've done in one day, but a little bit more would have been much better. So that's it, thank you.